Hi, and welcome to this screencast. Today, we'll take a look at how you can create an automatic application. Do you think it sounds a little bit difficult? Well, don't go away. It's actually quite simple. We'll start with just what I have prepared for this demonstration. I have here all the desktop pictures from Mac OS X. And let's say I'm creating a website with wallpapers and I would like some very small thumbnails for my website. And I would like to upload all these images. So let's create an automatic application that can do that for me because renaming and resizing all these images would take forever. There is 99 images in total here. I have counted them. My computer has. And um, I would like them all just exported into this folder called Web Photos. For this, we'll need an application called Automator. You can find it in your Applications folder right there. And you can create lots of types here, but I'm going to focus on the workflow and the application part. The difference between them is a workflow is just where you're working in Automator and just changing what you need to do and just clicking Run up here in the upper right corner, while application is a specific application that you are creating. And I will create both a workflow and an application for this. A workflow can be saved as an application and an application can be saved as a workflow. So it really doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm just going to choose workflow here. So we need to get these desktop pictures in here. And the easiest way to do it is just drag them from the desktop. But what if they're not on your desktop, the files that you need? Then we'll need, uh, where did that come from? Away with you. We'll need to just choose them from the application. Files and folders over here in the left pane over here filters down all the actions here that we can choose from. Ask for finder items will ask you every time you run this workflow or application which finder items is it concerning. So if you're doing a lot of image scaling, this might would be a good idea when you're creating an application. For this though, I'll just use this get specified finder items. This way I just get to choose within the application what to do. And get specified finder items, click add and choose the desktop pictures folder. This will just tell it to get all the files in the desktop pictures folder. But as you remember, it had subfolders. We want them and they will be copied too, but the contents of them is what we want. We don't want the folders because we'll sort this our own way. So we need the files out of those folders. So we need to get this one, get folder contents, and repeat for each subfolder found. That means if you're having a large image library with subfolders and subfolders and subfolders inside subfolders and whatever, this will just go in and get all those files. So now you have all the files in just one big pool. We need to get the folders sorted out because they will be copied too, so we'll have the images twice. So we need to get the folders sorted out. And we do that by using this, Filter Finder Items. And here we can choose what filter we want on, and of course we want the kind to be image. This will go in and find all the images in all of this. That's what we want to work with. All these files we would like to make a copy of. So I'll just type copy up here in the search field and double click the copy finder items. And here we can choose where to copy them. Now in any of these actions I probably should tell you, you can in any action tell it to ask you when you run it. And I'll do that, do that on this copy finder items. So I'll open up this options and show this action when the workflow runs. So that means when we get to the copy of these finder items, it'll actually ask me where to copy them to. Now we have all the files copied. And of course, we'll choose this web photos uh, folder out here. The next thing we want to do with them is actually rename the, renaming them. So I'll just type rename up here in the search field. And here is the rename finder items. Here we can choose a lot of stuff. And let's say I just want to make them sequential with a new name. I want to call them wallpaper. And then I would like to have numbers. And they start at 1 and they are 2 digits long. Because since there is 99 photos, there's no reason to have 3 digits. They can be separated by, let's say, a period perhaps. 
that's not Windows friendly. Let's see, space. No, that's not web friendly. Let's take an underscore. Yeah, that's web friendly and it looks fine too. We can also change to have the number before the name if we want to do that. I would like to do that in this one. And then we, if we wanted to, we could add a date to these two just by creating a new. Um, well, it seems I should have worked when it said to me there. It reset it. No, it added one more. Sorry. I just got a little confused. Now we have two of these. So we can add date or time. So after the name of the item, we can say what date we created them, in what format. And here in Denmark, we use day, month, year. And the separator will be a forward slash. That's fine with me. And we want to have that after the name and the separator will be the underscore again. So it's web friendly. And now we have all this renaming part done. Now it's time to scale the images. For that, we'll need a little bit different uh, actions than what the finder can do. We need the photos part. So I'll just click photos over here and I'll filter it down to all the things regarding photos. And here it is, scale images. Just double click and it'll ask me, do I want to create a copy of them before I do this? If I click add, it'll insert a copy item before I uh, scale them. But I already did that earlier in my project, so I'll just say don't add. Here I get to choose what width they are having, or I can choose what percentage they are being scaled down to. But I'll just want to have it in pixels. And let's just say 480 pixels, that's okay for an image thumbnail on the web. So that is my entire workflow. And during this workflow, you can open up this results and see what is actually going on with these files. And of course, you can open the description if you are in doubt. You can also see the description down here. Whoops. Where did it go? I think I got it closed. Well, there it was. And you can also read about it here. But now I have my workflow ready. I can just click run up here and let's just try and do that. It'll now run through all my files, tell me where I want to copy this. I'll just choose other and choose my web photos folder, choose and continue. It'll now make a copy of all the files, renaming them and now scaling them. So if I open up my photos folder now, they are all renamed. And as of right now, they are being scaled. And that's about halfway through right now. And we are almost done. It really doesn't take that long. I'm working on a MacBook Pro with 2.4 gigahertz processor. Now it's done and we can just open up this results and we can see the results. And we can do that in a lot of different ways. And if we open up the web photos folder and just quick look them, they are a lot smaller than the original. If we just open up an original here, that gets a bit larger. And of course, we can also just open the get info pane and get the information about the photo. So that is a little example of how you use Automator. But let's make this a little bit more friendly in terms of we want to do this every once in a while. So we'll go up to files and, files and folders and drag this ask in instead. And the filtering is okay. We want to filter the images that we choose. And before we just get ahead of ourselves here, ask for finder items, we get to choose a prompt here. Let's say, choose your images. And we want to allow files and folders in multiple selections. So we can choose multiple files and folders and it'll start at the desktop. That's fine. It'll get all the folders contents and all the folder items only the images and it'll copy them and this is where it shows the action when it runs and we'll just choose the desktop where it will start. Make the finder here SQL. Let's ask this one to pop up when we run it so we can give it another name and we'll just clear this namespace. The digits and everything is fine. Then we'll like to add date or time, that's fine, and scale the images. Now we have made a little bit more friendly version here. Let's go up and choose save. 
And here we can save it as an application and we'll just save it on the desktop. And we'll just call it image scale there. And just close the application. Now let's get rid of this web photos folder and drag image scale down to the dock. We can also throw it in the stack if we want to. So if we drag it down to my download stack, it also is in there. But let's try and run this application. It'll now, here, look at the title, choose your images, exactly what I wrote. Choose. Where do I need to copy them? Just pop this up, click other, and create the folder that I need. Choose and continue. And it's just scaling all the images, I think. Now here it was. And let's type a name. Let's just call it desktop this time and click continue. And we can just see this, um, this little wheel up here spinning and we can just stop it if we want to, but let's just, uh, let's just allow it to complete. I have my activity monitor open here and we can see the processor is pretty much working pretty hard. Should be done in a moment. And there it was. When I open up my images folder, everything is like I wanted it to be. And that is a quick demonstration of how you can use Automator. There is a ton of applications and things you can work with here. Look at all these actions. There is over 200 actions here and it's just getting it going. Some applications you might find installs some actions here. Here is, for instance, an action from ScreenFlow. That's the application that I use for my screen recordings. I know that Microsoft Office has a tendency to install something in here too, so just uh, sit around and look for them. There's a ton of stuff in here. Here's something from Keynote. And thank you for watching.